Hi there, and welcome to Phosphorus 5. Phosphorus 5 is an open source web operating system that allows you to orchestrate your applications by combining plugins, creating loosely coupled systems. This feature of Phosphorus 5 allows you to create agile Ajax web apps where any parts of your system can easily be interchanged with any other module. In addition, Phosphorus 5 contains a managed Ajax library which allows you to create rich Ajax web apps without having to think about the nitty gritty stuff. On top of that, Phosphorus 5 also contains PF Lambda, which lets you dynamically organize your modules together in a much easier and agile environment than C Sharp and traditional .NET programming allows you to. Basically, we've done the hard parts such that you can do the fun. Here I have a small web app created in Phosphorus 5. It basically just overrides the application startup file to use my custom startup.hl file, which is a hyperlisp file creating PF Lambda code. This startup.hl file simply loads another hyperlisp file called hello-world.hl and executes it as PF Lambda code. My hello world hyperlisp file includes a CSS file, then it creates an Ajax widget whose ID is main with four children widgets beneath it. One H1 header element and three buttons. Now, let's have a look at this application, what it actually does. Here is my first button. If I click it, then the header and its CSS class changes. Now realize that this is done in a completely managed environment and I don't need to write any JavaScript at all to make this happen. And my code is completely living on the server side of things, meaning it's inside of my application and it never leaks any business logic to JavaScript or the web browser in any ways. The second widget here simply loads another hyperlisp file called prepend-widget.hl. Let's see what it does. So you can see it injected another widget before my header. Let's have a look at how that file looks like. Here it is. It creates a new widget with uh, a literal and an inner value of I was injected before the header. Try clicking me. Okay, let's try clicking here. Now he was removed. Here you can see the code that removed the widget. Then, if we click the third button in our Hello World application, then it loads up and executes this hyperlisp file, append widget.hl. Append widget does the same as um, the, the prepend widget, except it, during on click of itself, it loads up a fifth hyperlisp file. Let's have a look at it. That was loading the append widget hyperlisp file and then when we click this guy then we load up this movie. Now let's try to move the mouse over the movie. And as you can see the header of the page changes. Now there's absolutely no C sharp written to execute this logic and if we refresh our page and we inspect what goes over the wire we will see that only the changes needed to update the DOM are being sent back from the server to the client. This means that my application is extremely small, lightweight and utilizes very small amounts of bandwidth. Our fifth hyperlisp file is probably conceptually the most interesting one. Not only because it utilizes the HTML5 video element, but also because of some of the constructs it is demonstrating. First of all, you can override the HTML element in Phosphorus 5 with any HTML element you wish. If I wanted to have this rendered as, for instance, Thomas, then that would become a Thomas HTML element, which of course doesn't exist, but still it proves the point. Any attributes I wish to have appended into my HTML element on the client side, I can simply append as children of my pf.web.widgets.create statement here above. For instance, if I wanted to have a foo attribute with a value of bar, 
then it would be as simple as adding that attribute as a child of my create widget statement above.